guide because you really have to survive senior year. Like, you really have to survive it. So in this presentation, I have several tips, several like um, like questions and the answers to it, okay? So for the first thing, for your senior year, you need to stay on pace. It is crucial that you stay on pace your senior year. It's somehow helpful. I didn't do this, but it's somehow helpful to make a calendar, okay? Because that will have your due dates and your breaks. And when you make a calendar, stick to it. You are about to become adults now, so when you make a decision, you stick to that decision. Whether it may have a good or bad effect, you are all becoming adults now, so you need to stick to that. First tip, you need to get involved. I know it's a lot to process, especially for like the younger ones, but don't worry, it's fun too. <laughs> so, to get involved, you can either join community groups or school clubs. What's important is to get involved. I'll talk more about this later on, but it's important to get involved because of free tuition for, high school, for college. So, um, we have several organizations like the PCFI Youth Board, which is this one, and PPAC. You have like your own school clubs, which, is, which are like Future Business Leaders of America, Peer Tutors, and Yearbook. Those are just a few of the many you can join. Clubs and orgs give you the opportunity to connect with fellow classmates and like Filipinos like you, like you people. Now, school and community involvement also looks great on college and scholarship applications. Like I use the PCFI Youth Board. I am also a member of the Phil M Movement International. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys heard about the Fiesta Mosa Florida. It's a yearly fiesta in Orlando. It's also a great organization. It's great to get involved with as much as you can. So what to look forward to? Now, this is the fun part of the senior year. You have a lot of events. You have a lot of like last chances to grow with your um, peers and friends. So what to look forward to? You have the homecoming. You have the pep rallies. You have prom. Grad bash is, I'm not sure. Did you guys do grab, did you guys do grab bash? Yeah. Grad, but grad bash is, um, they closed down the whole Universal Studios and it's all just Florida seniors in there. No parents allowed, no old people allowed. <laughs> no old people allowed, so it's just students. And we also have the culminating activity, the graduation. It's just the best part of everything. Like you're just over with your high school life. Okay, now, volunteer. Your senior year is a great time to volunteer in your community. Volunteering, it's so beneficial, not just to you because of the bright future hours, but to the community, and you can shape the lives of those who live here. Like, what you're doing right now with the PCFI Youth Board, it's helping a lot for the future generations to actually promote and promulgate the Filipino culture. Because, who knows? 10, 20, or even 50 years from now, the Bayanihan Center or the Philippines site will still be here. And that's the plan for PCFI. So it's important to get involved. Now, on the more technical side, to qualify for the Bright Futures, you need to have at least 75 volunteer hours. Um, Tita Abby um, has some volunteer hours during Philfest, and I think this one counts too. Mm -hmm. as and Barrio Fiesta, Pasco. As long as you get involved mm -hmm. and actually volunteer your services, or, you know, just sitting and listening to me, it's counting as your volunteer hours. Some great organizations to volunteer with are your local facilities. If you don't want to get involved with the Filipino community, that's fine. Although I advise against that, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, you can also volunteer at your hospitals, your libraries, or schools, and of course, the PCFI. Now, this is one crucial thing in your college, in your senior life. Do not overwork yourself. Mm. And I did that mistake, and I wish somebody told me not to do that. Because I overworked myself, I had a job, I studied. I'm not saying you cannot study and have a job at the same time, but you need to balance everything. You do not overwork yourself. You do not take on more responsibilities that you can handle. Now, this is kind of a life advice, because if you, if you put too much on your plate, chances are you'll panic. Chances are you won't be able to do everything. So you need to not overwork yourself. Make sure you can balance your job, extracurricular activities, and volunteering with your schoolwork. You do not want to be too busy to enjoy your last year of high school. This is your last year, so you have to make it count. Remember, if you are applying for colleges or trade schools, this will also take a good amount of your time. It will stress you out. You have to do a lot, so you have to... Set a schedule again, as I mentioned earlier, you have to set a schedule, you have to follow it. 
And the worst of it all, take the SAT or ACT. If you haven't already, we have juniors and we have seniors here. I advise starting around spring semester of your, of your junior year, just because so that you know what, how the SAT works. Now, if you haven't already or are not happy with your score, take the SAT and or ACT as soon as you can in the fall of your senior year. Now, um, you can choose what to take. Like for me, I only took SAT twice, twice during my senior year. But again, that's not the advice. Just take it during your junior year just so you know how it works and then take it again senior year. You will get your scores back sooner and have time to retake the test. Now, a great, great instrument for the SATs and how to study for it is the Khan Academy. It has videos, it has like lessons and lectures, and it helps you a lot. Make sure to register for the tests ahead of time to guarantee your testing spot. Now, do we have any questions right now? Okay. Now, for the seniors and for the juniors, if you, if you don't know it yet, you can bust out your phones right now. These are the upcoming ACT dates for this school year. So you guys can snap a picture, snap a picture if you want. And these are the oh sorry there you go. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And then these are the upcoming SAT dates. Now, taking the SAT is much more kind of stricter compared to the ACT primarily because more people are taking it, and it's the more go-to option of like incoming college people. So. Um, I would suggest taking the early spots, like the August or November, because it's August mm -hmm. right now. So just take it during November, October or November, just so you have all those dates next year. Now, only advice for SAT is not to doubt yourself. When you're answering, it's just a full page of like circles. Like circles, a lot of circles. So <laughs> don't doubt yourself, go with your gut. So if you saw like four choices, just go with the first God. Like the first choice that you want to do. Just go with it. It's don't doubt yourself because once you start doubting yourself, you're gonna ask yourself questions, and that's when it goes down. Now, a lot of people hate this, but it's actually good. Talk to your counselor. Some people I know some people who only talk to our high school counselor once or twice the whole school year, and that's not okay. You need to talk to your counselor all the time because your counselor is your go-to person for everything school related. Most especially for the seniors, your graduation status. Always, ta always talk or ask your counselor regarding important things such as if you are on pace, if you are on track to graduate or many more. Make sure to double check, especially around the month of um, April, like a month before graduation. Make sure to double check if you are up to date on all state exams as this might affect your graduation status. Like. Um, if you took the EOCs, if you took the SATs, and all the other necessary state exams, just double check before actually, before actually graduating because you won't, you might not get your diploma. Okay, think about your future. What career path is right for you? Now, since you're all Filipinos here, I'm more than sure that some people are going into the medical field. Okay, so um, who are planning to go into the medical field? Raise your hands. Okay, Who's, who wants to do pre-med? Who wants to do nursing? Yay. <laughs> so um, are there other like BA or BS courses, like um, communications courses, journalism courses, or all the other courses? Raise your hands. Wow, all medical field? Okay. Now. Um, people go in all different directions after they graduate. Oh, anyone wants to join the military? See? It's a good thing to join the military and do pre-med. The, the benefits are just the best. People go in all different directions after they graduate. Some people you don't see any time after that. Some people in your high school you will never see again until you're 20 years for you. Yes, you're getting old. You have to accept that. Now, some go to community college. It's a two-year. It's a two-year school. Some go to a four-year university, the military, straight into into the workforce, or take a gap year. You need to figure out. Juniors, seniors, you guys have lots of time. You need to figure out what will work for you and help you achieve your goals. Now, being Filipino, there's this kind of like stereotype that. 
When you're Filipino, you go into the medical field. When you're Filipino, you take nursing. Because mom told me so. There's that, there's that stereotype. Now, it's 2018, people. When you don't want to take up the major you're taking up, I'm sorry to the parents, but this is advice. Speak up. Tell your mom, tell your dad that, Mom, Dad, I don't want to take this course because this is your life. This is the life that you're going to be living for the rest of your life. Who wants to be working as a nurse when you actually want to be a dancer, right? So you need to figure out what you really want and let your parents know about it and talk it out. Don't just, oh, no, bye, I'm out of here. Don't do that. They are your parents, so you need to talk to them about it, okay? Now, what do you really want? Who is interested in going to a community college? Univer taking community college? Mm -hmm. How about university? How about joining the military? How about gap year? Gap year is you kind of um, defer one year, you stop one year, and then you just go the next time. Okay, for the seniors, this is your senior year to-do list. Research colleges that you would be interested in attending. Is anyone interested in attending any Florida university? Raise a hand, please. Okay, anyone, anyone interested in attending an out-of-state university? Okay, now, for those who are interested in attending Florida universities, you need to research now. I mean, not for the middle, not for the middle schoolers yet, or like the freshmen and the sophomores. Enjoy your life. Well, you're still young, you know. <laughs> but for the juniors and seniors, research colleges that you would be interested in attending, primarily because going to a school because ooh, the party life here is better, or like ooh, there's frats and sororities. No, those that's just for your social life. You your priority in college will be your academic life. It's not your, it's also priority, but it's a lower priority. Now, College Board, the same facilitator of the SATs, is a great resource for finding schools suitable for your needs or wants. Write down deadlines. The national deadline for decisions for all universities in the U.S. is May 1st. You need to decide on where you're going by May 1st. I would suggest doing it before that, primarily because you won't want to run out of spots. So, spend time volunteering. If you're doing a Florida university, the 75 hours of volunteering together with 3.0 or 3.5 GPA can get you either from a 75% or to a 100% free tuition. For the out-of-state, um, unfortunately, Bright Futures doesn't work for out-of-state, and it's going to be expensive. So, you, you should be researching by now other choices to pay for college. There might be scholarships. Especially being part of like um, an ethnic organization, being part of the minority, there are other there are other choices for scholarship out of state or in state. And the best of it all, start thinking of a topic for your college essays. Hmm. Now, not all universities or colleges require essays. Like USF doesn't require one. So, is anyone thinking of going to USF? Go Bulls. So, okay, now, um, some universities do require essays. I'm not sure with UF, does UF require one? So UF requires an essay, and um, I'm not sure what to advise really on this part, primarily because USF doesn't require one, but just do good in your essay, and your go-to teacher for your essay is your English teacher for your senior year. They can check your essays, they can even give you a letter of recommendation, so just talk with them. Okay, college applications, your college questions answered. At this point, does, any ha does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Where to apply? Now, before starting with this topic, some people choose to apply like in the far universities, primarily because you guys want to get out of your house. I know, I feel you guys. But you have to be very, very intelligent about this because room and lodging makes up a lot of your tuition, makes up a lot of your financial aid, makes up a lot of your loans. So you have to be very smart about it. Now, when choosing what schools to apply it, think about these things. Location, do you want to be far from home? Do you want to be near home? Like in my case, I live 20 minutes from USF. 
So I save on the dorm, I save on my gas and everything. Now, do you want to be far from home? Do you want to be further from home? Do you want to go out of state? So it's really your choice, but you need to be smart about this choice. Because again, you're adults. You are expected to act upon your decisions. Now, major. Do they offer your major? Do they have a program that you are interested in? This is very important because this is what's going to describe your life for the next 50, 70 years. This is what's going to define you like oh like for example Kristen Kristen is a nurse you know it's it's what's going to define you now for average SAT or ACT scores you can go to collegeboard.com and they give you the average SAT score and all the other important details for each university just choose your university right there are you above the average are you below it now this is one thing that most people get wrong like if for example USF USF's SAT requirement when you look at the website it's 1300 now again that's just an average I mean a little personal but I got in within 1130 so you just need to apply just apply because you never know what might happen now don't believe average scores but I mean do better as much as possible, do better, but don't rely too much on the average because, again, that's just an average. Number of students. What size of school is it? Some people are introverts. Some people are extroverts. Some people prefer community colleges because it's, it has smaller class sizes. When, when with universities, it's like classes with 100 people in one auditorium. So you need to figure out what you want. Are there 5,000 undergrads or 30,000? Which would you prefer? And the most important of it all, graduation rate. Because this will define how hard the university is or the college is. Do a majority of the students graduate on time? Do a lot of students graduate late? You would not want that. You would not want that. Do many students drop out? Now, you need to figure these out on choosing where to apply. Now, choose how to apply. There are different resources online on how to apply to your colleges. The most common one is the Common App. It's a, it's a website that sends out multiple applications to multiple universities at the same time. It helps you with your essay and everything. The Common App is helpful when applying to a number of different schools. It has a standard application that you fill out, and then each school may have extra application questions, but it's basically all the same. Name, address, age, GPA, transcript, and everything. Research each option a bit more and choose what will work best for you. Again, this is your choice. Your choice. It's 2018. Now, most schools offer three different applications. You, the incoming seniors, if you want to apply as early as now, that's fine. Early decisions. Early decisions plans are binding. So, if you get in, if they accept you, you need to go to that school. These deadlines are typically earlier in the year, and you apply to only one college early decision. Now, for early action, it's non-binding, but students receive an earlier response to their application, but do not have to commit until the national deadline date of May 1. You have more time to actually decide on it. The deadlines, though, are, er are earlier in the year, typically between November 1st and December 15th. Now, applying early action means that you will get your admissions decision sooner. It's better because you won't be sitting in the dark, not knowing where you're going to go. Now, for regular decisions, that's fine too. I did regular decision. The deadline is March 1st. This is another thing that I wish someone told me. The deadline for um, USF was March 1st. I applied February 12th. And it was hell because... <laughs> You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know if they were still going to accept you or if they ran out of slots. Just don't do it. Apply as early as you can. Now, for those wanting to apply to several schools, there is this magic, magical thing called the SAT fee waiver. The SAT fee waiver waives the SAT fees for you. And if you get an SAT fee waiver, you get four or five college application fee waivers. Now it waives the fees for your application so you can apply to as many colleges as you want. It's all a lot, don't worry. <laughs>
it's all gonna come to you. Tip one, stay organized. Keep track of every deadline and write down every application or scholarship deadline in a notebook, planner, calendar, or any other thing. Keep track of what application materials you submit and what materials still need to be submitted. You need to be on time for this. This is not called, this is not like statistics or like AP Bio where you can just, oh, I'll just turn it in tomorrow. No, hmm. this is college, people. So you need to actually be serious about it. Keep track of what financial aid forms you need to fill out. I will get into this later, but FAFSA, hmm. it's the magic of it all. So some school requires FAFSA, CSS profile, and their own financial aid application. Some schools require only FAFSA or other one of these. Tip two, some people apply for one to two schools. I applied only for USF and only for USF. Don't do that. Some, some people apply for eight to 10 schools. Now that might seem a lot, but some people actually apply for 25 schools. Do what works best for you. If you wanna apply to two universities or like five universities and three community colleges, that's fine. Do what works best for you. Know though that um, getting into a community college is easier. That's why I almost went with the community college too, because the requirements are much more lenient. And um, the class sizes are smaller, so it's actually better because you learn more. But I opted for university primarily because of the university experience. Tip three, keep track of your application status. Once you apply, most schools will email you login directions to their portal so that you can track the status of your application. If needed, make this website your homepage because you will refresh it and refresh it and refresh it as as long as possible until you get your actual status. This normally includes what, includes what materials were submitted and additional materials that need to be submitted, like transcripts, like your SAT scores. You need to get in touch with your counselor for your transcripts or your office of the register. And you need to get in touch with the college board for your SAT scores. If they do not have this, I recommend calling the school after you submit all your application materials to make sure they received anything. They might sound rude when you call them, but you can be rude too. <laughs> Tip four, a lot of time for your essay and revisions. Don't make it the night before the deadline. This is not high school anymore. You want to leave yourself enough time to finish the essay, get it proofread, and get it revised. Again, your go-to for this is your English for teacher because she, he or she can help you with the grammar, with the punctuations, with the content of the essay. Ask a teacher or other educated individual to help you proofread, revise your paper. Don't obsess over your essay. That's the common mistake that a lot of people make. They obsess over the essay, so they put too much into it. Because it's not that big, but it's big. You need to give it a lot of thought, but don't pressure yourself. Don't overwork yourself just for your college essay. The essay is an important part of your application because it helps the admission counselor get to know who you are. Choose your essay topics wisely. Fee waivers are your friends. Did you use an SAT or ACT voucher? Then you may qualify for a college application fee waiver. There are four different application fee waivers. You can snap a picture of that if you guys want. Now, um, the most common one would be the college board or SAT free waiver one because you receive four of these. So you can all use the four ones the four waivers for participating universities or colleges. Now we also have ACT, NACA, or the Co Coalition Application Fee Waiver. Most of these forms needs to be signed by and sent directly from your guidance counselor. Now, that's why I said make sure to talk to your counselor because he or she will determine when you graduate, sign everything, send everything. So you need to be in contact with him or her. Your best friend, financial aid. This will include scholarships, grants, and or student loans. For, so for the whole United States, we have the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the FAFSA. The website for it is fafsa.ed.gov. That's going to be your best friend for the seniors. That's going to be your best friend come uh, late this year because I think they, they closed down the deadline earlier for this year compared to last year. 
Now it opens October 1st. Do it as soon as possible to get as much aid as you need. I did it October 1 at 1 a.m. So do it as early as possible because you will get like more aid when you do it like very early. Um, I did it October 1 at 1 a.m. I got full right for my first year. It is recommended to get it completed as you can as soon as you can after this deadline. Check with your schools or universities after that. After that, for additional deadlines, it takes about an hour to fill out. The good thing about this is you won't need your parents' W2 or tax information anymore. You just need your social and that's it. Because FAFSA now has auto IRS, so they fill out the parents' information thing for you, so you don't need to do that. You will need your social security number, you and your parents' 2017 SSNs, not taxes, and your FSA ID. Now, my advice for the FSA ID, before October 1, make your account. Because come October 1, the website is going to hang. That's what happened during 12 o'clock. That's why I applied by 1. It hung because a lot of people were trying to make accounts. So do it as early as possible. Now, the common mistake for everyone, apply for FAFSA. Even if you aren't sure you will get any aid, you never know. So... You might think like, oh, mom makes too much. I'm, I won't qualify for, fa for FAFSA. No. Apply for as much grants as you want. Apply for as much scholarships as you want because you will for sure get some. We, live, we are lucky to live in a country where they give a lot of help to the citizens. They give a lot of help, most especially to the students. You guys are lucky because in the Philippines, they don't do that. They don't do that. So just do as much as you can. Now, the bright futures. You, can, you guys can just take a picture of this. This is the basis for the 75% or 100% Fulbright scholarship. Okay, it's all self-explanatory, so I'm just going to skip it. Search for outside scholarships. So again, because we are part of an ethnic group or we are the minority, there are a lot of scholarships that are made available for us. Now, College Board has one of these search engines that is really helpful, which is that website, so just take a picture of it. So, to wrap this all up, final advice. You can do this. It might seem a lot, it is because it is a lot. But you have to actually not pressure yourself and not, and not think about it too much. Well, there's a lot to do. You need to enjoy your senior year. You only get one senior year, so make sure you enjoy it. This is your last year in high school. The last time you'll ever go to Hoko. The last time you'll ever go to Pep Rally your whole life. The last time you'll ever meet your high school friends. The last time you'll walk the corridors. The last time you'll get into that room that you hate the most. The last time that you'll get into the cafeteria. So make it count. This is your last year in high school. Now, college applications are important, but your mental health is even more important. So if you need, take breaks, take naps, and step away from the applications or like the senior year stress for a little while. Be but always remember, you got this. You you got this. So don't pressure yourself. You guys got this, the seniors. I wish you guys good luck. And you are you guys are very well informed now. So it's gonna take off some of the stress, but don't pressure yourself because you got this. Best of luck. And you only get to experience your senior year once. Make every make every class count, make every banter count. Make your hoko count, make your prom count, because it's the last one you'll ever have in your life before being an adult and actually facing the real world. Make it count and make every moment worth it. Thank you.